Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tarshil. I'm a freelance data engineer and a YouTuber. In this video, we're going to be discussing about one of the most important projects that you can do if you are a beginner in data engineering space. The project is building ETL pipeline, extract, transform, load using PySpark and we'll be using services such as Confluent, Kafka and Redshift. So as a data engineer, you will be doing a lot of different things and one of them is building ETL pipeline extract transform load while designing ETL pipeline what you do is basically you have multiple sources of data so data is coming in multiple forms you have web analytics it might be coming from some sensor data it might be coming from some RDBMS data so there are multiple sources we extract data from all of these sources then we transform it transformation can be anything it can be a business logic so if business has logic of combining two different columns and getting the third column that can be a transformation if you want to remove some null values if you want to add some data if you want to remove some data you can do this so this is called as a transformation phase and then the last phase is loading that data onto some target location that can be any storage location such as s3 google storage or azure data blob or it can be some data warehouse that you want to store your data. Once you store your data onto data warehouse, there you can visualize this data, find the insights and generate some reports for the business user. So this is the overall summary of ETL pipeline extract transform load. You can also call it as a data pipeline. Data is coming from one source and then we are putting that data onto some kind of target location. This is a project available on Project Pro website, PySpark project built using data pipeline using Kafka and Redshift. So we will understand about the entire text stack that we'll be using in this project and what you will be learning. Okay, so the text stack that we'll be using the language is Python. Python is one of the highly used language for data engineers, data scientists and mainly everyone. So if you want to become a data scientist or data engineer, make sure you learn Python. So for data processing, we have many different frameworks available. One of the highly used open source framework is Apache Spark. PySpark is a layer on top of the Spark environment so that if you don't know Scala or Java, then also, you can write your code in Python using PySpark. So you don't have to learn new language from the scratch. Then we have some services such as Docker that we'll be using to deploy our pipeline. We have Confluent Kafka because we want to capture the real-time data and then put the data onto real-time basis onto Amazon Redshift. Redshift is a data warehouse available on AWS. The main two services we will be focusing on this project is understanding Amazon Redshift and Confluent Kafka. So Amazon Redshift is a fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse available on AWS. Redshift Spectrum also runs SQL queries directly against structured on unstructured data Amazon S3 without loading them into Redshift cluster. So generally what happens when you create a Redshift cluster you have to load that data using something called as a copy command. So you have some data stored onto some storage location. That data you have to load inside the data warehouse. Then you can run the SQL query for the analysis if you want to analyze some kind of data. But Redshift Spectrum, you can directly run your SQL queries on top of files. So instead of manually loading that data onto Redshift, directly query on top of those files and generate insights out of it. Redshift also lets you run complex query, analytics query against the structured and semi-structured data using sophisticated query optimization, columnar storage on high performance storage like SST, massively parallel execution. So you can run your queries against structured and unstructured data. It also has the query optimization. So when you write your query, it will automatically optimize that query on the backend so that you can get results quickly. And Redshift is a columnar storage. That means all of the data are stored in the column format. Generally, when you use the RDBMS such as PostgreSQL or MySQL, all of these data are stored in row level. So when you query any data, it will read the complete row just to pull that one column. But in the case of Redshift, say if you want to get the average of last one year of revenue, then it will only pull that one column. It won't have to scan all of the different columns available inside the data warehouse. That way you can efficiently pull the right data and optimize your performance. And also Redshift uses storage like SST and massively parallel query execution. So when you run your query, it will get divided into smaller chunks. It will run in parallel and give you the combined output at the end. So instead of uh, wasting your time running query for the 10 minutes, it might run in like let's say five minutes or depending on your cluster size. It is an OLAP solution to store petabytes of information without owning the infrastructure. So we have two systems. One is called as OLTP, online transactional processing that we generally use to store uh, the faster read, write, update data. So whenever 
uh, you receive order from the Amazon. All of these data get stored onto OLTP system. But in the case of OLAP, if you want to analyze last five years of data, OLTP system cannot do that. That is the reason we use OLAP system, which are highly designed for analytical purposes. So this is all about Redshift. Then we have Confluent Kafka. Kafka is a distributed data storage designed for real-time input and processing for streaming data. Now, if you have used apps such as Uber or Google Maps, you see all of the data gets delivered to you in real-time basis. You can track your location, you can track the driver location and everything. So all of these things are done using services such as Apache Kafka or Confluent Kafka and these data are called as a streaming data. Streaming data is information that is continuously generated by thousands of data sources, all of which transmit data records at the same time. So streaming data is basically keeps generating data. So if you have some sensor data, if you have some stock market data, all of these data are infinite and keeps generating till the system is running. A streaming platform must be able to cope with this constant influx of data and process it sequentially and progressively. So when you design a streaming platform, it should be able to handle all of this data and have the mechanism already built on top of it. That is the reason we use services such as uh, Kafka or Amazon Kinesis or on GCP, it is data flow. Kafka efficiently stores record streams in order which they are created. Kafka is most commonly used to create a real-time streaming data pipelines and application that reacts to changing data stream. So if you want to understand when do we use Kafka, it is basically when you have some kind of real-time data coming and if you want to process that data in real-time basis, when you order something from the Amazon, you get the notification quickly that your order has been confirmed. This is basically happening in real-time basis. When you order something from the Zomato, you can easily capture that information and track the order that the driver is coming to you. So all of these events are happening in real-time basis. It mixes communication, storage and streaming processing to enable both historical and real-time data storage and analysis. So the capability of Kafka is it can store data for some amount of time, it can process data and it is also used for the faster communication. So if you are someone who is a beginner then this project you can do and learn about the highly demanded market tools such as understanding Kafka, Redshift, how to build data pipeline and talk. So this project is available on Project Pro website. You can go and sign up for that and start doing this project. So I hope you understood the overview of this project. If you did, then make sure you hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.